Hello everyone, I'm going to show you an incredible exploit that I've been playing around with for a little while now. I'm going to show you in, in action and then show you how it is done. But I'm going to do a couple test games here. I am officially on USB host. My first test game is going to be the great arcade version of Bonk's Adventure. I'm a huge fan of the Bonk games. He didn't have the great notoriety or popularity that, say, Mario and Sonic had. But he had a great foray and some great journeys on the TurboGrafx-16 and TurboGrafx CD. So definitely check those out. Just like Adventure Island series, I mean, they're both underrated, you know, series. And what I like about this particular arcade version is the fact that you have a level select. This is really, really good for pick-me-up gameplay. And his head is his weapon. But look how colorful these graphics are. Very catchy, poppy visuals. Great music, great gameplay. I mean, Bonk should have had, a, you know, a better journey into the gaming world here. But Mario and Sonic pretty much just took the crown and Bonk was forgotten pretty quick. Just an obscure gem of a game. But this is Bonk's Adventure. Definitely check it out, the arcade version or the TurboGrafx-16 version. And now we're going to try out a Sega CD game for a test here. Let's try out Sega CD Cobra Command. If you're a fan of Dragon's Lair, you'll feel right at home with this game. It's... Oh, I'm floored by this amazing Sega CD intro music here. I updated the BIOS and this is awesome. But if you're a fan of Laserdisc games and Dragon Slayer, you'll love this game. I mean, I love the full motion video and animated games that are showcased on the Sega CD, and this system was definitely ahead of its time, despite it flopping miserably. This is Cobra Man for Sega CD, a really, really fun game. Now, what normally happens when you unplug your flash drive from USB host? You get your default games, right? Well, let's see what happens when I unplug the flash drive, power down, and power back up. Note that the font here is a, a comic Newell font right now. So I'm going to unplug the flash drive. I'm going to power down. Then I'm going to power back on. And let's see if I get my default games. I have the splash screen. I'm good to go. But the flash drive is not connected right now. So I am not on USB host right now. I am non-USB host. One thing to note is if you run a non-USB host... Depending on which arcade core you're going to be using, you're going to have to do the Neo Geo bypass method that I mentioned because whether or not you have the BIOS installed off a of USB host, the moment you go on USB host, there could be a conflict. So definitely do the Neo Geo bypass that I mentioned if you want to run Neo Geo games. But we're going to test out some games here. Let's see what we have here. We'll try arcade version of Strider. And of course, I'm going to show you how this exploit works. So I bypassed the default games completely. Strider is an exceptional game. Capcom made it. I'm going to definitely have to do this in my arcade series. Okay, Strider's working great. Let's do one more test game here. How about the great arcade Splatterhouse? What more can you want? A game where you're basically Michael Myers. Namco, another exceptional company. They made Tekken, Ridge Racer, Pac-Man, Galaga. list goes on and on. Where's my red blood? <laughs> There's probably a dip switch for this game to turn blood red, but I'm not going to look for it right now. I'd rather just do a little test of this game. 
Anyways, I'm going to switch over to the computer, and I'm going to show you how I achieved this exploit, so you guys and gals can check it out for yourself. And I've actually showed you this exploit without you guys and gals realizing it a couple weeks ago in one of my other videos. My uh, USB magic video when I did the firmware switch. When I explain how this works, it's going to make a lot of sense. Anyways, uh, typically if you're doing from scratch, before you do the USB host process, you go to kernel and uninstall. What I did is instead of doing that, I uninstalled every module. I just powered the system on, let it sit for a few seconds until Clovershell took effect. Then I un uninstalled every single module. And then I flashed the games that I would like to the NAND flash memory. I think them per normal. But one thing you got to keep in mind is uh, you have a limit to how much NAND memory you could use. You got to remember these default games on the SNES Classic take up uh, approximately 60 megabytes of space. 60 to 80 megabytes of space. That would keep your flashing of how many games you decide to have to roughly 100, 120 megabytes. Don't go overboard because any HMODs that you install are going to be included in your NAND flash memory. And you have uh, roughly around 225 total NAND flash memory. I mean, it's not exact, but I would proportionately say to stick to around that number. So the differential between the games you install pre-USB host and the HMODs you install while on USB host, they're going to work in conjunction together. So try to keep this at a good, comfortable level so you do not create a conflict. You could easily get away with 80 to 100 megabytes of games and then install all the H mods you want as long as you're not going overboard. But anyways, uh, I'm going to be on the drive here and show you how this USB host exploit works here. I'm pulling up the drive here. And it works one way and then one way in reverse. So say I'm in my hashy folder here. And I make a firmware folder. I don't need these here right now. These are just backups. Move those. In the firmware folder, if I copy a firmware here and I power it on, but I have games in this folder here, it's going to just have the user interface with that theme and the language and all that good stuff. But, if I take all these games, and I remove them from this folder, like so, and completely leave the folder empty, I'm going to my backup folder, and I'm copying them all over there. And by the way, if you ever want to run a USB host on NES, I mean, it's not as easy to do, but you have to have the copyright and title fonts in a directory. That's the catch to getting on USB host on NES Classic. And I included those in my core set. But now that we have the hashy directory, I have my fonts, that's okay. I have my, for, you know, I copy a firmware here. And I have my games folder completely empty. So by having it empty, it'll load the default games for the, you know, the NES or the SNES, depending on which firmware I do. Now this works in reverse for when I do the flashing of the games on Hashi 2 before I go to USB host. So if you uninstall your kernel, you have no games whatsoever. So when you unplug the flash drive, you're getting the default games because it is blank, just like this folder here. But by flashing the games and then going through the Hashi process, the games exist. So when you unplug the flash drive, it bypasses the default games and you get the games that you flashed. Does that make sense now? So I hope you guys enjoyed the exploit. Have fun with it.